and so I mean you're built like something like that and then if you get a bigger flow more rain if that was say even a bigger bank you would get the water would come down with more energy no no if no, no, then no, 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 deposit hold on I'm looking at sort of some road and stuff up here but you see you want that to go right across the face and turn around again because the water that starts going over here when that um, bigger flood event happens the, it's got to create, this would be a pile of water there, because the water then is this deep, deeper than the water coming into it, because where it's crossing through here, let me, let me show you over there, if we turn this water they got in this pond across over there, you watch it'll start stopping the sand moving, where it's moving there, we, if I turn this water back against, see that little stream, we'll do it. Now you walk in there and see if you see if that sand moves. Now you watch, I'll stir the sand up. Now we're here we'll move. One force meeting another force. Yeah. And you can build these in big flows. That channel along there, I'll build it out of sand. You watch it won't wash away until I get it out of balance. And then when I get it out of balance, it'll start to take the sand away. Yeah, the, this is what they call the, the country laboratory. <laughs> That's the same way as at the end of your contour bank. That's you exactly got what you've got to do. That's there. the shape you need, and you've got to turn right. against water coming like that. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you work that out when you've got no water? With difficulty. But the patterns are there, and there is a way of, when you know that shape, see, the only place you've got to put rock is just here. Right, because once it starts to... to uh, drop and the balance of the, see, if you build these enough and a flood happens in just this gully, this water runs up the stream like that and then it's actually coming back against itself so it still works, it doesn't matter which stream is running, <coughs> the process works at all times and that's how you bypass your dams where you'll never get into trouble. You try to get in your mind that you're dealing with critical energy levels and grass has only got a mm. reasonable rain. Mm. And this is this has no got grass. a much lesser range, yeah. right? So if you yeah. can actually stop it moving here, mm. it's a shoe in once you put grass into the system. Because mm. this is basically as soft as you can get it. Mm. Now if you can do something and engineer it so it doesn't wash it away, then when you put grass on it, don't worry about it, it's going to be okay. Where, where, where did the last level come up to through here? It's not going to make any difference to the bed if this is set up properly. Just this, this, yeah. this run just recently. Yeah. Yeah, just sort of above that, that tree there. Yeah. So what you're saying is you don't have to get above that level. You're not trying to stop the flood. Not at all. But whatever if, if you, you do... Is if got you try to stop the flood, you'll get in trouble. Yeah, so what you, but what you do has to survive that flood. No, it's got to... Stop this minimum erosion. Go, do something like that. It's got to stop that sand moving. Leave right. that little bank sit there. But in a gully, it's possible to yeah, it put a leaky dam and yes, turn that is. water out onto the frontage so you might shallow Even flood your front. Even wander it in the, flood, in the bottom of your contour. Yep. See, this is happening here. You've got those, each of those banks are only there because the pattern of this water has caused it to not move. Yep. And what you do, learn to do is, the more, further you can turn this water, the more you can wander it around, the quicker this will fill up. And you can start with a step like When you've got mulch like that, you carry stones and strategically put them in. And you just stay even in here. If you were standing here and watching it, as you place them, you see the balance of this water 
will stop the stop the sand moving. Oh, here we go. Do you want it? Over here. Blow the water up over the end of the other. You're looking back that way and watching if nothing moves. And you stir it up water, you see even the sand here, you see the skeleton that was forming. There's a lot of sand coming through there and it was forming the skeleton, now it's pretty well stopped. It's all, it's, that's broken all the energy of carrying this sand. See, was cutting this sand, building this skeleton. Volume now, because you've blocked it up there, coming down here, it's creating more energy just there. That's right, but you, you deal with it by putting another stone here, so that you just stir that water up a bit more. And Peter, what, what I'm not getting is, I'm not getting that the water is going to the you've got a certain gradient. Before you do anything, there's a certain gradient. Yes. So if you block the water here, mm -hmm. and then you block it down there, you've still got the same overall gradient, I mean, ignoring the flat water body, you've got the same overall drop between the two, and what you've done is made the drop shorter, the, the distance that the water travels between those two bodies, rather than being spread over the full length, yep. it's now shorter and therefore steeper and more erosive. That's the logical interpretation. What, why is not that happening? Because the top of the flood level there, mm. because of the restriction of the flow on the bed, means that that water coming over that rock will mix with this, and as the flood increases, it'll actually reduce the energy on the bed, because the more mm. turbulent with this difference in the speed of that water and this, is enough to cause it not to be able to, to keep carrying heavy products. Like it's the best way to do this is have a fairly big rock sort of three times that size sitting here and another one there. Mm. And they need to be, in all flood variations, mm. about a half a metre, three quarters of a metre, half a metre in the sand and three quarters of a metre out. And so you build these piles. We're just doing a demonstration of saying, look, you can stop it with a pattern rather than the big picture stuff, if you want to analyse it from that aspect, watch a kayaker coming down a stream. He comes through with the rocks at shoulder height almost always, and if you go and test it, it's about three quarters of a metre underneath those rocks. The reason they are set in that pattern is because when the rocks roll down the stream and they fall in that pattern, they take the energy out of the water and you can't move them on. So it actually automatically lays them in a de-energised pattern. And why do we have to understand all of it? Because that's how it works pretty well always. You know, and you watch those patterns and then you can start saying, well, like you, you look down here and you'll find that there's a pattern that's been stirring water up and this is building sediment. And if you can get more plants in there, you can actually have it up. And in two or three floods, this is up this high. you still got the same fall because all the energy is taken out into here. It's just a step, you know, that takes all the energy out and it gets through the step with no more energy than it had when it came into this step. Mm. All this, the idea of all streams is that 60% of the water is actually going backwards anyway and we're just making 80% go backwards. That takes the energy out of the carrying capacity. Mm. That's a great figure. Regardless of whether there's a change in the gradient, the starting speed is slower. Yeah. That's the key? That's the key. And the only way you get it slower is getting water a lot faster, mixing against water at a different speed. And sometimes the more you can come <coughs> into an area that's, that's like a big rock and whatever, the more you can channel that into that one area, the more water goes nowhere because it'll all foam 